fellow Vincentians. As leader of the new Democratic Party, the largest political party in St. Vincent and the Grenadines, I speak to you solemnly and sincerely about the state of affairs in our country. A crisis of governance exists in our nation following the recent general elections that were held a few days ago on November the 5th. You, the people of our nation, spoke during the election. More of you voted for the New Democratic Party than voted for the ULP. You gave a popular mandate to the New Democratic Party. I thank you from the bottom of my heart for your support and for your confidence in us. By your vote, you said clearly that you prefer the ideas, the plans, and the vision laid out by the New Democratic Party. I am immensely proud of the campaign we ran. We put forward the best slate of candidates this country has ever seen. We put forward plans to grow our economy and to create new jobs and to create economic opportunities, especially for our young people. And our people embraced that message and voted for change, for a better future for themselves and their families. Sadly, that change has been deferred and the ULP has retained government by being declared the winner in more seats than the New Democratic Party. For under our constitution, the party with the most seats forms the government. However, it is a fundamental and treasured principle of democracy that a government that does not have the support of a majority of the people lacks a mandate from them to govern them. It lacks democratic legitimacy. For anyone to try to explain this away, as Dr. Gonzalez has tried, denies the reality of the argument that the ULP itself made in 1998 when they won the popular vote and the NDP won the most seats. As they argued then, we assert now that the outcome of the recent elections means that those in government have now lost the moral authority to govern. This creates a crisis of governance in our nation that will only be resolved when the people are again governed by a government that has the support of a majority of the people. This creates a crisis of governance in our nation that will only be resolved when the people are again governed by a government that has the support of a majority of the people. I will return to this point later in my address. For now, let us look briefly at the numbers. In 2020, as in 2015, just under 66,000 people voted in the general elections. In the recent elections, the NDP secured swings in 13 of 15 constituencies right across the nation. Even in Dr. Gonzalez's constituency of North Central Winwood, he lost votes in every single polling station, including his hometown of Connery, where there was a swing of 4% in favor of the NDP. He lost those votes to a vibrant young man, Chieftain Neptune, who because of the COVID-19 pandemic had only a few re weeks on the ground before the vote. Also, the ULP's heir apparent, Camilla Gonzalez, suffered a massive rebuke in East St. George, where first-time NDP candidate Laverne gibson Velox made up 421 votes to cut the 2015 lead from 607 votes to just 186 now, a swing of nearly 4% towards the NDP. In South Windward, the swing to the NDP was even greater, 6.5% and Noel Dixon reduced the ULP lead from 759 votes in 2015 to just 217 now. In North Windward, our first-time candidate, Chevron John, performed brilliantly 
against enormous odds in reducing the ULP's lead from 323 in 2015 to just 62 now. In our politics, these are remarkable achievements. It shows a fundamental realignment of our politics has occurred and augurs well for the movement to bring about change led by the new Democratic Party. I thank you, the people, for the tremendous confidence and support given to our team and for voting for change. But we must finish the job. The declared results show that after four terms in government, the ULP clings on to power precariously, having eked out severely reduced majorities in seven of the nine seats with the slimmest of margins in North Leeward, a single vote. Never let anyone tell you that your vote does not matter. Never tell anyone likewise. Never let anyone bargain or sell their vote to anyone because the future of the nation can literally hang on a single vote. Of the seven seats that we held before the elections, the NDP retained six, notwithstanding the fact that we secured 32,887 votes, which is 496 more than the ULP got, and 1,860 more than we got in 2015. There is a popular outpouring of frustration and dissatisfaction with the ULP and Dr. Ralph Gonzalez. The people's desire for change was heightened during the election campaign. Change from the oppressiveness which is being experienced as a result of the past 19 years of rule under Gonzalez and the ULP. We heard that call and will, with increased vigor, and determination, work to bring about the change that we need and that you voted for. Political change, that is change in government, has been deferred, but it will not be indefinitely denied. Meanwhile, we will spare no effort to bring about the necessary economic and social improvements we offered to the people during the campaign and now continue to hold out as the path to a brighter future. The underlying conditions driving the desire for change is the fact that our people have been left in no doubt that the Gonzales administration has become increasingly notorious for its subversion of constitutional government and the democratic process in our country. And this is compounded by blatant nepotism and cronyism, and by the lack of transparency and accountability in the conduct of our nation's affairs. Most damning for the government and painful for our people is the widespread incidence of social and economic decay that is seen in the high rate of unemployment, especially among our youth, poor health care services, and rising crime. It is seen very clearly also in the increasing poverty among our people. That poverty was documented in the poverty assessment survey that the government itself commissioned but buried for over two years because it did not like the stark reality of growing poverty exposed by the survey, which only came to light when it was obtained and published by the NDP a mere few weeks ago. The survey showed that since 2008, poverty overall increased from 30.2% to 36.1%. Even worse and more telling is the fact that the poorest of the poor, referred to in the survey as the indigent poor, increased from 2.9% to 11.3% 10 years later. Poverty is growing in our country. The service said it, but you felt it 
long before that. The impact of the COVID-19 pandemic remains a matter of grave concern. Our economy, already weak and rudderless before the pandemic, has been brought virtually to a halt. Tourism has dried up, and our hotels and restaurant operators struggle against growing odds. There are no new capital inflows through investments to spur economic growth and create jobs for our people. And there are no credible plans to revive our farming and fishing industries. These are matters that we addressed honestly and constructively during the election campaign, and which we will continue to pursue. They are problems that we intend to address, whether in government or not. Our opponents, for short-term political gain, distorted and misrepresented the policies and programs we presented, and lied about our motives and intentions. Through shameful, jingoistic rhetoric and appeal to the basest instinct of our human nature, the usual refuge of populists and autocrats, they sought to mislead our people while offering nothing constructive and hopeful in return. Some believed it, but thankfully, most did not. And even after all that, more people voted for the NDP than the ULP. This tells me that there is much work to be done, but more importantly, that there is hope that it can and will be done, though it may take a little lot longer. Overshadowing all this is the doubtful legitimacy of the present ULP government and the impact this will have on the governance of our country. As I mentioned earlier, on the basis of our shared values, that at its core, democracy is expressed through the will of the people, shown by a majority of the votes of the people. The legitimacy of the minority government that the ULP has now become is very much in doubt. This minority government has resulted, notwithstanding the widespread exploitation of state resources by the ULP to influence voters and the widespread buying of votes in key constituencies. Clearly, these circumstances, including the meager margins of the results in the recent polls and the unfavorable decisions in the final count in North Leeward, which gave the seat to the ULP candidate, cast a dark and growing shadow on the legitimacy of the new ULP government. At Gonzalez's swearing-in ceremony, our Governor General expressed her intention to support all and urged Gonzalez as Prime Minister to be inclusive in the way he governs. That is welcome advice. If nothing else, it should remind Dr. Gonzalez that after taking office, he should not continue with the politics of divide and rule, of victimization based on partisan politics, and with the immoral exclusion of over half of our people from constructive engagement in the process of governing and from sharing in the benefits of the nation's resources. Regrettably, from his responses, including references to, and I quote, a cockeyed notion of democracy, end of quote, and a blatantly false suggestion that he has always sought to include the opposition at all levels, there is little hope that this advice will be followed. Nevertheless, our circumstances demand hope in all its aspects, and we will, by all proper means at our disposal, ensure that the majority voice of the people which the NDP now represent, will not be silenced or marginalized. We will be heard and will insist on shaping the direction of our country's future. I will mention here the matter of the worsening cyst which continues to fester on our body politic. That is, 
Dr. Gonzalez and the ULP governments continue in disregard for the rights of the three NDP teachers who contested elections in 2010 and his spiteful refusal to ensure that they receive from government what our courts has said they are entitled to. On behalf of the majority of the people of this country and my great party, I call on Dr. Gonzalez and the ULP to end its ongoing victimization of these three patriotic Vincentians and obey the judgment of the court. In replying to the Governor General's exhortation to be inclusive, Dr. Gonzalez basically confirmed his intention to continue along the path of division and exclusion that he followed over the years. This is a far cry from the stance which he and the ULP adopted in 1998 when his party won the popular vote and the NDP won the majority of the seats. And I quote, the ULP acknowledges that St. Vincent and the Grenadines has a first past the post electoral system and that in a narrow legal sense, the NDP has the right to be called upon to form the government for the time being. But politics and good governance have always been more than narrow legalisms. A truly functioning democracy demands that the consent of the governed, that is, the consent of real flesh and blood voters be obtained. 55% of the voters have stated unequivocally that they do not want to be ruled by the NDP. That's what they said then. At that time, the ULP called for dialogue with the NDP aimed at working out an interim arrangement pending fresh elections, which they propose shall take place within six months. They appeal to the Christian Council, the Chamber of Commerce, and other social partners to act as brokers in the negotiation process. But when Ralph Gonzalez became leader of the ULP in December 1998, he refused any form of cooperation with the NDP government, not even to attend official functions, including welcoming a foreign head of state. And the ULP vowed then to make the country ungovernable. This situation led to the so-called roadblock revolution and ultimately to the shortening of the constitutional term of the NDP government. This historical experience is useful for context and consistency. I know the frustrations and concerns that weigh heavily on our people following the difficult election with its inconclusive result. I am also keenly aware of the strength of our support, of the deep yearning for change in our people. And I promise you, change will come. We must commit ourselves to that task, for in completing it, we will usher in a government that has earned the support of a majority of the people and thereby set in place the essential foundation upon which our future prosperity and happiness depends. To succeed, this must be a collective effort. The NDP will be the vessel that carries that movement to its successful outcome. It is our duty, and we are committed to continue providing constructive leadership that will guide our activism and lead to a brighter future for all our people. To our young people, I say a special thank you. Thanks for your support. I urge you to remain engaged in the political process. In the recent campaign, your voice was loud and strong, and your courage was inspiring. Now more than ever, your country needs you. Retreat is not an option. To our young people, I say a special thank you. Thanks for your support. 
I urge you to remain engaged in the political process. In the recent campaign, your voice was loud and strong, and your courage was inspiring. Now more than ever, your country needs you. Retreat is not an option. Become and remain part of the growing movement that is necessary to bring the change our country wants. As for me, I am not going anywhere. I love my country too much. This is my life's work, and I am honored to do it. The more people I meet and share a smile with, engage in a brief conversation or other activities with, the more that love grows. Therefore, I am as committed as ever to the task of bringing change as urged by you, our people, and as God Almighty permits. In all things, his will be done. Thank you for the support and the outpouring of love you gave to me and to my colleagues during the hectic political campaign. Since the vote, many, many of you have called and sent messages in support and urged me to persevere on behalf of the nation. You did the same for our other candidates. We deeply appreciate it. Nothing moves me more than to know that the people are behind us and are urging us on. I experienced this so sweetly last Sunday when I drove around my home constituency in Beckwith, thanking the people for their support. Many came out along the road to encourage me, and others came out in their homes, stood in their yards, on their steps, in their porches, some high in the hills, waving their shirts for us as we drove by in a beautiful expression of love and appreciation. I was moved to tears. We are a generous, kind-hearted, and beautiful people. Our destiny is greater than our present circumstances. We must always believe that, so that setbacks and disappointments along the way will appear as mere speed bumps or potholes that can be avoided or surmounted on the road to our destiny. We will not let the lust for power in others deter us. And we will not go quietly into the night as some may wish. We have come too far for that. My friends, this is bigger than partisan politics and therefore bigger than just the NDP. This is a social movement on the march to free our country from fear, intimidation, bribery, and corruption. A movement to create jobs and to bring a brighter future for all our people. We will use our endorsement by the people to move our country forward. For, as it is written in John chapter 1, verse 5, the light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. Let us work together. Do not be afraid of taking action when it is right and just to do so. You spoke for change. You voted for change. And together, we will make it happen. We will create a better country and truly live the dream of one nation, one people. Thank you, and God bless you. God bless our nation.